We're going to now look at drawing organic compounds, which is covered in the language of organic chemistry chapter, which is chapter number two. There are different representations that we can use to draw organic compounds, and we're going to look at this through an example, namely looking at drawing the structure for citric acid. Citric acid is covered in the citric acid cycle, which is the chapter opener for chapter 21. In this representation of citric acid, the so-called condensed structure, we can see one, two, three carboxylic acid groups and the tertiary alcohol group. In this representation, the so-called full structural formulae, we now see the CH bonds and the CC and CO bonds included. And finally, for the skeletal structure, we have this relatively uncluttered representation where, for example, the CH bonds and the carbon backbone aren't shown. And although there are a number of different ways of representing organic structures, three of which are shown here, it's the skeletal structures, which are the ones which are generally preferred, with the important parts of the molecule drawn in full, using hashed and wedge lines as appropriate. So we're now going to look at the use of hashed and wedge lines, and this time we're going to look at a slightly different molecule called isocitric acid, which as you might expect is an isomer of citric acid. Here is the skeletal structure of isocitric acid. And if we look at this carbon atom here and this one here, we'll see that each of those carbon atoms are bonded to four different substituents. So they are chiral carbon atoms or chiral centers. As we have two chiral centers in the molecule, we can for draw four different stereoisomers for isocitric acid. And indeed, here are the four different stereoisomers. We can represent the arrangement or the configuration of substituents around each of those chiral carbon atoms using hash lines and wedge lines. So for example, in this particular stereoisomer, the bond from the carbon to the carboxylic acid group is pointing away from us as indeed this one is here between the carbon and the oxygen. In this particular stereoisomer, both the bond to the carboxylic acid and the bond to the OH group are shown pointing towards us. They are out, if you like, in front of the plane of the paper. And the alternative two stereoisomers, the bond to the carboxylic acid points towards us, the OH away from us. And finally, in this representation, we have the reverse situation. So we have four stereoisomers, which we can represent using hashed and wedge lines. And so when you've got chiral carbon atoms, you're going to use hashed wedge line nomenclature to show the stereochemistry of those chiral centers. We're now going to look at the use of common abbreviations when we're drawing organic structures, and we're going to look at a derivative of isocitric acid. So here is isocitric acid again, and we've got these three carboxylic acid groups and the alcohol. And we're now do, going to convert all of the three carboxylic acid groups to esters and also this OH group we're going to convert into an ester. So we've got this molecule here with four different ester groups. And you'll notice we've got these various side chains coming off of the esters and we can name each of those different side chains. So for example, this group here, the blue, is called our isopropyl group. This group here is the tertiary butyl group. When we have a benzene ring connected to a carbonyl, this is called a benzoyl group. And finally, just the benzene ring by itself is called a phenyl group. Now, if we want to represent this molecule much more simply, we can use abbreviations to represent each of the four different groups or side chains of the esters. And this is shown here. And as you can see, this is a much simpler representation of the same molecule. Here's the phenyl group, here's the benzoyl group, the tertiary butyl, and finally the isopropyl group. So it's important to be able to recognize and use common abbreviations when you're drawing organic structures. And finally, we're going to look at drawing compounds with unsaturated carbon chains, which contain carbon-carbon double and carbon-carbon triple bonds. And we'll look at a couple of examples here. The first example is a molecule called arachidonic acid, which is a naturally occurring polyunsaturated fatty acid and this has one two three four alkenes which are cis or have the Z configuration and you'll remember that when you have a saturated carbon chain we have this zigzag 
arrangement of carbon atoms, which gives an idea of the approximate shape of the molecule. But notice here that when we introduce these cis or Z alkenes, we get kinks within the carbon chain. And it's important to give an idea of the shape of the molecules when you're drawing organic structures. In this other example, anacycline, we have two alkenes, which have the trans or the E configuration. And you'll notice that when we have alkenes in this configuration, we maintain the zigzag arrangement of carbon atoms. And finally, when we're looking at drawing alkynes, you'll notice we have this linear arrangement of carbon atoms. We have angle here of 180 degrees. And again, it's very important when you're drawing molecules such as anacycline to give an idea of the approximate shape of this organic molecule.